Last time, we started from Twin Leaf Town. It did lots of shopping, got some stuff, got some Pokeballs, arrived in Jubilife City. We got we got a Skitty, caught a Shinx. And, yeah. So, this is actually a really cool feature of Pokemon Diamond. I really like it. Also, hello, Kokomi here. Um, where if you open the... When you open the game up, I think, after, like, a day, uh, your journal will actually show you what you did in the past. <clears throat> so, let's take it from the top. Hello, Kokomi here, and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Diamond. Last time, we went up Route 201. We received our... A uh, cat friend and went up Route 201 and made some shiny new friends. And today we are continuing on our adventure in Jubilife City. Though first things first is I want to find a specific Pokemon. There's one Pokemon that I think can appear at any time in Platinum. It's different in Platinum, but in Diamond and Pearl I know it appears only in the morning or night. And that Pokemon would be... Cricketot, but not a shiny one. <clears throat> what can I say about Cricketot? It sucks. Uh, I did say my goal would be to say one positive thing about every single Pokemon. Um, so I will say that it's positive is that it has a very low evolution level. It evolves into its final form at level 15. There we go. Wait. But it's going to be a big pain to get to that point, and honestly, you can find its wa its fully evolved form in the wild uh, later. I'm not sure how much later, but I know you can. Cricketot knows its two moves, Growl and Bide. So, Bide is a move that you start with- uh, Piplup actually learns it leveling up too. But basically, what Bide is, is that, yeah, it will start storing up energy. We tackle it to do some damage to it. No! Bad Kitty! Alright, sorry about that. That took, like, seven minutes to find this one. So... As I was saying, Bite is essentially a move where you store power for two turns, and then based on the damage the opponent does to you, which we'll see in a second. Okay, good. And I'll just growl this turn so I can actually show. Uh, Cricketot unleashed its energy. Yeah, it can actually be kind of scary, but here's the thing. It's only if you actually send it, if you actually attack it. If, if you, and plus since you know it only knows Bide, you can just not attack it. And it becomes hilariously easy. Maybe just tail whip it a bunch so you can one shot it. Bide is not, it sounds like a good move, but it's really not. <sighs> but... You're coming with us, a uh, little guy or a little girl. And all the shinies I catch are going to be female because of the cute charm glitch and how it's set up. But let's take a look at Cricketot's uh, Pokedex entry. And it shakes its head back to front, causing its antenna to hit each other and sound like a xylophone, which kind of matches its cry. That's pretty cool. It's about a foot tall, uh, the Cricket Pokemon. And I think I said earlier that it evolves at level 15. I was thinking it. I know I said it evolved early, but I don't remember what I said 10 minutes ago. Uh, but it's not that it, it actually evolves at level 10. So it's, it actually evolves really soon. And sure, what the heck. You know what? Just for the fun of it, I will take you with us just for a little bit. Maybe grind you up a bit off screen. But it'll have to be like... I'll name you Chris, because that's like the first three letters of your name are similar enough. <clears throat> and that's all the Pokemon we can catch for right now. Gonna go heal really quick. Alright. And we have the city to explore, so we can go into various buildings. 
And why don't we do that? I, I never really take the time to explore these buildings, and I imagine many people playing these games don't either. Pokemon are wonderful, deeply mysterious creatures, but the trainers, it seems the only thing that matters is battling. Oh boy, we found a Team Plasma member. Hello there, trainer. If you get stumped and don't know what to do, talk to people. Talk to everyone you see. Go places. Go wherever you can. You'll find many new places by doing just that. That is generally true in a Pokemon game. If you're stuck, just go run around or talk to some people. Did you know? Some kinds of Pokemon evolve when they get stronger from battling. When they evolve, they take on completely different forms. Yeah, so this is very much since it's at the beginning of the game. They're going to give you tidbits if you've never played a Pokemon game before. But, you know, I, I, I've neglected to talk to these guys. So, there. I And I'm sure most of you have as well. What are you guys doing? I'm trading Pokemon with my buddy. I made my Pokemon hold an item before trading it. That will make the other trainer doubly happy. I don't know. It depends on the item. <laughs> we'll be talking about an infamous in-game trade later. Hello, trainer. Do you know much about Pokemon? Yes, I do. Ah, I see. You're knowledgeable. I imagine you wouldn't need to visit the trainer school then, but do visit if you have time. You may discover something new. And if you say no, he'll probably say, Oh, but don't worry, there's a school. School? What is this? The real world? Oh, uh, if you try to go this way. Past here is the GTS, which stands for the Global Trade Station. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't have any gym badges. The GTS is off limits if you don't have a gym badge. Sorry. We'll talk about that another time. It's not like it works properly anyways. But why don't we go into the train, the trainer school. And hey, look, it's our friend. Let's not talk to him. Uh, what do you have to say? Pokemon are smart enough to, to use items they're holding, but they won't know what to do with man-made items like potions and antidotes. This is actually a feature or a little thing about Pokemon that's been there since the beginning that I really like. If you have a Pokemon like hold a berry or something, they'll eat it when at the appropriate time. But if you give them like a potion, a spray, which is like a spray bottle, the Pokemon will be like, what the hell is this? I don't know what to do with this. And I, I think that's a cool detail. I always like that. I wrote an essay in my uh, notebook on what makes a true Pokemon trainer. Well, can we read his notebook? It's a notebook filled with our See, Pokemon are to be caught using Pokeballs. Up to six Pokemon can accompany a trainer. A trainer is someone who catches Pokemon, raises them, battles them with them. Mission is to defeat the strong trainers who await challenges in Pokemon gyms. Yes, catch Pokemon and fight. This is why Team Plasma happened. Uh, we do learn about Pokemon types. Grass is weak to fire, fire is weak to water, and water is weak to grass. I think that's how it goes. That is correct, and if you recall, Barry picked the water starter. When we- or Nick. Excuse me, god, that, that's gonna happen a lot. You just became a trainer, did you? You should look up the topics that you're not familiar with. Yeah, on this board is a list of status ailments. So poison, burn, if you're not sure what any of these are, uh, you can just see details here. Uh, yeah, but basically, loses HP during battle and in the overworld. Loses HP in battle and attack is lowered. Your physical attack is lowered. Uh, can't move until you defrost, but you can defrost pretty quickly. 50% chance of not moving that term and your speed is halved. Uh, you are, can't do anything until you wake up. Or use a, uh, an, an awakening. The appropriate item. So, yeah, let's talk to Nick. Hey, Gala, did you come to study too? I went ahead and memorized everything that was up on the blackboard. After all, it's the trainer's job to avoid having their precious Pokemon hurt in battle, right? So, Gala, what brings you here? Huh? You got something for me. So, what is this? Score! It's a town map! Huh? Why are there two in here? I like it a lot, but I don't need to. Here, Gala, you take one. And with that, we get a town map. I find it interesting that it's called a town map. Well, according to town map, I guess Orberg City is where I should be going next. And yeah, he's going to go become greatest trainer and all that. Let's take a look at that town map really quick. It's in our key items. Town map, it, I put in air quotes. 
it shows the entire region. You can see cities that you, that we're going to eventually visit the Pokemon League. It's kind of a cool thing to look forward and see like, oh, I wonder what this is. I wonder what this is. And Orberg City just happens to be right here. You have one, I believe there were one in Pokemon Center as well, but I might be thinking of third gen. But you have one on you. Uh, but let's talk to these two guys. Uh, these two traders I find very interesting. They actually change between Diamond and Pearl and Platinum. But first, let's just actually talk to them. And I want to put Brownie in the front of my party. Because Brownie needs EXP. Doing it is the best way to learn. Can we get a battle with you? Go, my Pokemon, go! So, in po both Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, both of these trainers will challenge you. However, what they do is actually different. Um, he will not have an Abra. I forget what Pokemon he has in um, Platinum, but it's not an Abra. So this is to teach you different things. Uh, I think Quick Attack is just stronger than Tackle, no matter what. In, in Platinum, this battle teaches you about X items, which are items you can purchase and use on your Pokemon to raise their stats in, uh, in place of doing a normal turn. And ugh. um, yeah, good start, good start. Hidden Power is a very interesting move. It is, it's uh, said to be, if you look at its description, it says it's a normal type move. However, um, the type is actually dependent on the Pokemon. And I don't mean the species of the Pokemon, I mean literally the individual Pokemon. Uh, I don't remember exactly what determines it, but it's something to do with the personality value of a Pokemon. So Pokemon represent is a Pokemon's nature, gender, all of that stuff is determined by a few, uh, a 32-bit integer, I believe. And in there is also what determines the type of hidden power. It changes depending on which Pokemon uh, is, it is. So Macaroni could have a hidden type that is a normal type move or a grass type move. And the only way to figure out is through trial and error, or there will eventually be an NPC who will just tell you. Uh, do I have a potion? I did not like that. Feels like a waste of a potion, especially when I can just leave. But one, I'm lazy. Two, I don't want to leave the school just yet. I just became friends with my Pokemon. I'm not sure if we can do this properly, but maybe we battle? I believe she also has hidden power, uh, hidden power Abra, where I believe the kid, the boy uses an X attack and the girl uses an X defend, but I'm calling this purely off of memory, so I'm, I'm sorry if I get it wrong. I just find it interesting that they chose to change it, and I think teaching about X items is kind of more important and relevant to the adventure because hidden power is just more of a quirky move that actually has a really good use in competitive because competitive i have no idea what hidden type these abras are oh please please be a low roll please be a low roll please be a low roll Oh. Nailed it. Well, I didn't expect to have a heart-poundingly close battle with an Abra. But Brownie really needs experience, so... I like to study a lot. I thought I could win. You got pretty close. I mean, my cat would have come in and scratched the living daylights out of your I don't even know what Abra is supposed to be your thing but I'm completely impressed by how tough you are if you'd like talk to my friend and get a technical machine from him but we've been studying we've been studying every day and but we were no match at all that, that was probably just someone dropping my sister probably just dropped something uh well we would be able to use a technical machine and we obtained TM10 Hidden power, the move they were using against us. 
Um, so yeah, TM is good for one use. If you were playing games uh, prior to Pokemon Black and White, so that's like half the DS games, all the GBA, Game Boy games. Uh, though if you're playing like the 3DS games or the Switch games, you don't need to worry about this. Uh, basically, TMs teach a move and uh, hidden power is a move that actually almost any Pokemon learn. Of course, Krikatot can't learn it, but it's evolved form can, but almost any Pokemon can learn hidden power. And it's actually, it's an interesting move because it can potentially provide uh, type coverage for something you might uh, not otherwise have. So keep in mind with hidden power that um, its type, it's always a special move. So don't teach it to a physical attacker like Starly. But what you would say, I taught it to Starly. And it happened to be in... A, rock, a fighting type, then it would be really good coverage against Starly's weakness to rock types. So that's just an interesting use for it. You could give it to your starter. Chimchar and Piplup are both fine special attackers. But our Chimchar is off training in another land to take on the evil Starlies. Oh, you call yourself a Pokemon trainer and yet you have no Poketch. That is Pokemon Watch, or Poketch for short. Oh my, you are a rare case indeed. You see, I invented and now manufacture, manufacture Poketches. Not only that, I'm conducting the Poketch Poke promotional campaign. All you have to do is find three clowns in Jubilife City. If you can find them, I will gift you with a Poketch. The three clowns will each ask you a skill testing question. The question will all have to do with Pokemon. After all, a Poketch is a tool for Pokemon trainers. Yeah, collect a coupon, and I believe none of the clowns will be inside buildings. I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember where all of them are. But here's clown number one, and I actually kind of like this, because, again, this is my uh, first Pokemon game. <clears throat> and, um, does a Pokemon grow by defeating... Okay, so this one is kind of... It, it, you can kind of figure that out. And then he tells you about evolution. This is sort of all these clowns. I think the answer is yes to every single question that the clowns give you, but they teach you. Uh, they'll teach you different things uh, if you're brand new to the series, which I was at the time. Hi, I'm a Poketch campaign clown. Let's roll out with my question. Can a Pokemon hold an item? Yes, they can. A Pokemon may hold a single item. Some items become effective as soon as they are held by a Pokemon. Berries eaten by Pokemon, and well, there are also different types of held items that may boost the stat or change an aspect of a Pokemon, but that's not relevant. Did you see me on TV? I was in an interview. Man, yeah, you, you go little kid. I I know when like you, I was little, you'd always look for like, the, oh my god, did I appear in that random uh, camera pan? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I don't want to talk about this right now. That's kind of creepy though. He goes, hey kid, want to join a group? Uh, when you walk with your Pokemon, they gradually grow friendlier. Uh, sorry, I was actually putting resting my hand a little on the recording cable, which might be why some of the footage uh, janked up a little. We're good. Nothing else is going to happen. Okay. Hi, I'm a Poketch campaign clown. Let's, let's roll out with my question. Just like Pokemon types, the moves of Pokemon also have types. As we've seen, yes. If the Pokemon's type matches the move type, the move is made more powerful. Indeed, that is called, that is referred to in the Pokemon community, uh, not officially, but fans at, by fans as same type attacks, uh, same type attack bonus, abbreviated stab. So if you hear um, people talk about uh, having stab on a move, that's what they're referring to. They're referring to the fact that the move type matches the Pokemon's type. Um, yeah, let's go back to the, well, I don't, I'm not going to leave a, the guy hanging. Ew. Okay, I, I hope my recording equipment's fine. I'm like paranoid, hyper paranoid about this. Um, okay, let me count your coupons. I'll use the poke at here. One, two, three. Man, this guy, he, he's going all in on the marketing. 
In return for these coupons, I present you with this watch. What, or Poketch for sword. I, um, and yeah, you can see what time I'm playing at. You can add apps to Poketch and make it more versatile. Touch the screen and do as you, and yeah. So, <clears throat> right now it displays the time. It always displays it in a 24 hour format, which I, I grew up on AM PM. So this always threw me off. Uh, let's switch to, uh, you see a little Pikachu here. Uh, little Pikachu adorable um, and yeah you can switch to different apps so you have a calculator so if you want to just figure out what 78 minus 5 is it's 73 hooray um, this is a step counter which I think is fascinating uh, because there are some stuff that are based on steps especially when it comes to like Pokemon breeding and some glitches uh, an out of bounds explore and require step which makes this a godsend you can see uh and the c button will clear back to zero but i honestly it'll keep going in the background uh this is actually all of your pokemon but just to cycle around for a second to the almighty step counter so c 114 i'm still walking and yeah it still went up so I, I like to keep it uh, and just see how many steps I have throughout the whole adventure, or at least through a certain point. This is what I usually keep my Poketch thing on, and I think a lot of people do. This just shows who's in your party and their HP, and if they have a status ailment, their image will be blotted out. Um, and you can tap them. Hear the cry. Um, if you want to cycle through the Poketch really fast, you see one, two, four, five. These refer to the app. So this is app number five, app number one, app number two, app number four, app number five. And I, I just rem always remember that this is app number five. So when you get more apps later and you need to cycle through them quickly, I just remember to stop on five. If you're playing Platinum, you have a button that goes that makes you go in reverse. Yeah, quality of life change. Also, the best part that I really like, uh, the care. Look at Dawn. There, the, the the. Well, that's me, not Dawn. There is no Dawn. Uh, she actually has an animation for messing with the watch, and I think that's really cool. The both protagonists have it. It's not unique to the female protagonist. Uh, but I want to go out this way. You know, Barry's going to the right, so let's go left. Oh, God, Nick, not Barry. Route 218 is up ahead and is a great fishing hole that's almost unknown to people. Yes, sir, an old rod is a good thing. You think so too, am I right? We're just going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're talking about an actual fishing rod and not this isn't some weird euphemism. Yes, good answer. We can be friends. Oh, God. That's- oh! Okay, yeah, jokes aside. We get the fishing rod. You should fish wherever there's a body of water. And I think... That- oh, okay, well even though I pressed B to say no. So, wherever there's water, we can fish. Unfortunately, this is as far as we can go on this route. Actually, if I recall, there's like a hidden item over here. I might be thinking of something else. Uh, I think in Platinum, actually, there is an item right here, but I'm not sure. If you want to use it, you have to go into the bag and then hit use every single time. You just wait. Not even a nibble. Sometimes it will just fail. If you're going to fish, hit register and you'll see Y set. That means whenever I press the Y button, I use the rod much nicer for fishing wow uh the fish really aren't well i do want macaroni in the lead because there is one new pokemon an old rod as it implies is not very good in fact it is really capable of only finding one occasionally two pokemon depending on the area but in most areas it's only capable of catching of fishing up one particular pokemon and holy crap
Like, please? I wanted to show a fishing encounter? Can I get a fish? There we go. You press A. You can be too slow or too fast, but it's generally, the timing isn't that bad. And this is Magikarp. You, if you know anything about Pokemon, I'm willing to bet you know it, about Magikarp and how it is one of the most hilariously useless Pokemon. Magikarp knows one move. Splash. And what does this almighty move do? Absolutely nothing. No, I'm not joking. It does literally nothing. Um, but Magikarp does evolve at, well, gains a move tackle at level 15. And, or is it, it gains tackle and flail as it levels up. But both aren't that great either. But what is really special about Magikarp is when it evolves at level 20, it becomes a much more powerful Pokemon. So it's the example of the Pokemon that um, starts out super weak and useless and becomes super strong. And honestly, I think Krikatot was kind of meant to be like that, except its evolved form is only really good in like the first part of the game. <sighs> I'll meet you when I get, well, hopefully this is it. There we go, shiny Magikarp. Remember, we're adding the shiny Pokemon. So let's start with Fake Out. Uh, that did not do a lot of damage. Yeah, you see, Magic. Wow, the Magikarp is fast. Splash, but nothing happened. And that's literally it. That's all Splash does. There's no, like... Like, I remember when I was younger, there was the rumors of, oh, there's a secret one in a thousand chance that it'll actually be a one-hit KO move. No, no, Splash is completely useless. Uh, was it? Against Tackle? I think it's Tackle, level 10, Flail, level 15. Um, I do have a resource thing up on my left to check, to fact check myself on some of this stuff. Uh, but yes, Magikarp, the fish Pokemon. It is said to be the world's weakest Pokemon. No one knows why it has managed to survive the Pokedex throwing out some crazy stuff. If you guys want to come up with a nickname for that Magikarp, I'll let you guys do that. I don't intend to use it as a team member, but, you know, maybe I'll train it up and throw it into a battle at one point. Uh, let me double check on Magikarp's moveset. Okay, no, never mind. It learns Tackle at level 15 and then Flail at level 30. And one other interesting thing I found out when I was looking up is Krikatot. Um... It evolves at level 10, and dear god, you want to evolve it at level 10. However, if you're playing Platinum and you're really patient and wait until the mind-boggling level of 16, Krikatot learns Bug Bite, which is actually a pretty good move. Uh, Bug Bite is far more consistent than Fury Cutter. Um, let's go check out here. Oh, your Pokemon is quite adorable. Here, try can make this whole- Oh my god, she gave us the Quick Claw immediately. So the Quick Claw is an item that, when held by a Pokemon, occasionally just makes them go first, no matter what. So if you- It's honestly a uh, scene in competitive communities is kind of BS. It's completely luck-based. Uh, where you're just slow as hell, Pokemon can just suddenly go first. Um, but yeah. That, that's so it's interesting we get I forgot you get one that early and that that's why it's interesting to go also go around a heal ball completely heals a Pokemon it captures on the spot so this is interesting so if you're yeah so heal ball we'll talk more about them when we actually get a chance I like making my Pokemon use their attacks sometimes when they get stronger they learn new moves yep yeah, just the usual you learn new moves as you level up sort of thing thingy my bobber 
Um, but I want to head out north. Actually, did I talk to you? I'm making my goal to talk. Hi, Joe. Hi, yeah. Where'd you come from? Twinleaf Town, huh? It's a nice place, quiet and all. Jubilife City is a big place, so it might be a bit of a shock to you. Well, excuse me for being a backwater country bumpkin. Um, but I wanted to go onto this route, Route 204. You can also find Magikarp here. Oh my god. And... Uh, there is a particular Pokemon, there is a one new Pokemon, I believe. Uh, let me double check. The professional let's play right here, looking up information on the fly. Yes, there's exactly one new Pokemon you can find here. And honestly, it would be better if I looked for it during- Or no, same counter rate, it's always a 25% chance. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a little bit before I find it. You know how this song and dance goes. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, well I found it. It's not a shiny like I was hoping, but this is the, another Pokemon I was hoping to catch. Badoo. It's not that strong. In fact, it's classified as a baby Pokemon, which is a classification of Pokemon that are generally pretty weak. Can't breed, but we're, we're not talking about breeding yet. Um... And uh, you honestly, you can catch its evolved form in the wild later and... It, it can just save me the hassle of having to train a Budu. But, you know what? I want to catch a Budu. And not only do I want to catch a Budu, I want to add it to the team. And that's again where I turn it over to you guys. Give me a nickname for Budu. I actually did the, I actually started a run of this before. Uh, before I decided I was going to do a Let's Play of this. And I did catch a Budu and name it Wildberry. Which I do really not like as a name. I actually did post a screenshot on Discord of a shiny Budu and I said I just caught it, but little did they know I lied. I actually had that shiny Budu for months and it already evolved into its final form. But I asked, what nickname would you get it? I got one suggestion, Blue Rose. Which again, thank you for the suggestions, I really appreciate any and all suggestions. I'm not going to go with Blue Rose because in its shiny form specifically it doesn't have a Blue Rose. Though I do like the reasoning uh, the person gave that it was uh, that blue roses are rare. Shinies are rare. Well, in most places. <laughs> uh, laughs and cute charm. So, the reason I'm not going to nickname it blue rose is because it doesn't actually, it has a blue rose in its normal uh in its final evolution, it normally has a blue rose on it, but it changes. And I, I really like its shiny evolutionary form. I think they look really good. It's got a purple and black rose in its final shiny form. So yeah, we're gonna be here for a few minutes looking for a shiny Badoo. And honestly, I will probably look even more off screen for an ideal nature. You know, while I'm hunting for this Badu, well, speak of the devil in the shelf here. <laughs> oh my god. Don't name my. <laughs> oh god, I'm just thinking someone's gonna suggest a satanic nickname for Badu now. Um. So, tackle shouldn't. Unless it's gonna be like the Cricketot from earlier. Please don't be a repeat of the Cricketot. Thank you. Ooh, this one has poison point. Okay. So... Hmm, do I want that or do I want natural cure? So, Budu can have one of two abilities. Poison point and natural cure. Both have their advantages. When Budu takes a physical hit and its evolutions, and it'll stay the same throughout all of its evolutions. When it takes a physical hit, it has a chance of poisoning the opponent. And so now my cat is poisoned. The other ability is Natural Cure, where if you get inflicted with a poison status and you choose to switch out your Pokemon, then um, it, it will actually cure it. And I honestly kind of like Natural Cure more, so I think I'm going to go for, uh, you know, <laughs> I kind of want to get a Natural Cure one, because I like Natural Cure 
more than poison point because Budu is much its final evolution is much more of a special wall than a physical wall. So it'll be more like a middle finger as my Pokemon faints rather than like an actual tactic. Though Poison Point would actually be useful for the upcoming first gym. Oh, that's tough. I think I'm going to say I want to go for Natural Cure. Uh, but I'm also going to need to run to the Pokemon Center. Or do I just have an antidote on me? I don't want to run to the Pokemon Center. No, I don't. Do I have a Pecha Berry? No, I don't. <sighs> I'll meet you guys when I find another Badoo. And yeah, as you can see, with the screen sort of doing that, that's what it looks like when you're running around the world with Poison. And as you can see, when uh, you can update... Well, one, you can see my Skitties thing is blotted out. And two, whenever you touch anywhere that's not on a Pokemon Sprite, it will update the HP if it's decreasing due to poison. Macaroni survived the poisoning. Okay, so I believe, I don't remember when this change was introduced, but it used to be that, um, so Macaroni survived with just one HP. It used to be that the Pokemon would just faint from poison. I think this might have been the generation that changed it. It also led to some harrowing situations where your last uh, Pokemon that's alive is poisoned and you can't get back to a Pokemon Center before it runs out. Those are fun. Oh, I forgot you can encounter Zubat now. Zubat, um, if you've played Pokemon, I would imagine some of you are suffering from severe PTSD right now. I am so sorry, and also I did neglect to mention that in Platinum you can find Wormpole on this route, but I'll talk about Wormpole when it becomes available in Diamond and Pearl. Zubat is actually a pretty good Pokemon. Like its final evolved form is actually really good, and so I recommend it. I, I and yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Uh, Zubat's gonna start out not that strong, but once it gets there, and it, but it's still, it's better, it's easier to baby than Kr Krikatot is. But once it reaches its final evolutionary form, it's gonna be super fast. Um, yeah, just Zubat is probably one of the more, as much as people joke about it, it Zubat is not a bad choice for a Pokemon. And honestly, I might use it if it wasn't for the fact that I'm already using a Flying-type Pokemon. I mean, granted, I could just use two Flying-type Pokemon and say, screw having multiple Pokemon with the same weakness. Because... Nah. Okay, so I'm gonna have to level with you guys. I need to stop recording now because one, the video is getting file size is getting really big, and uh, two, um, should be able to show different forms of it. <laughs> it's always interesting to mess with this sort of stuff, but what I'm gonna do is uh, next episode I will open on catching the Badu. Because I feel it's important that we catch our team members on screen. I, I just prefer that I, that's how I want to do things. So I will hunt for my perfect Badu off screen. And yeah. And don't worry, while Zubat does only appear at night, it also appears in caves all, at any time of the day. So... It's not like I'm missing out on a chance to find Zubad. So with that, unless Badu shows up literally in the next minute. Because well, what I'm looking for is a 25% encounter that's a 20% chance to be shiny. That's also that's a 50% chance to have the right uh, ability. Yeah. Oh? You're not shiny. But shiny Badu and normal Badu look very similar to me. You were not the chosen one. 
So yeah, with that, I thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry there hasn't really been much action this episode, but we got to explore Jubilife City. And next time, we're going to explore the areas around Jubilife and heed Nick's advice and head start heading towards Orberg City. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, and what's this encounter going to be? What's going to be? What's going to be? Go yourselves. You stupid cat lion thing that doesn't even learn proper electric moves. Yeah. I still like you though, Shinx. I think your you and your evolutionary liner is cool. I'm just disappointed in your moveset, that's all. Bye. So I decided I'd try a few more encounters for the hell of it, and I found this I found this lovely gem. So because I'm still looking for uh, Pokedex entries, let's catch you really quick. And, oh, Inner Focus, yes, it's, uh, Zubat can have, I think that's one of two abilities it can have. Um, nope, never mind, only, it's only ability. Prevents it from flinching. Leech Life, terrible move, bug type, uh, uh, basically is, think of it like it takes eight, it drains HP from the opponent, gives it to you, though it got massively buffed in, in Sun and Moon, uh, to the point where it's actually a good move. And then they took it away from Zubat and gave it Absorb. Because they didn't want Zubat's early game Zubat's running around with a really good move. Zubat, the Bat Pokemon. Even though it has no eyes, it can sense obstacles using ultrasonic waves it emits from its mouth. I'm now just imagining that one scene from Avatar, uh, the Ember Island plays, where the person playing Toph goes, Oh, I see by screaming and using ultrasonic things, and just wails at the entire audience and the other actors. It was a really funny scene. Those of you who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. <sighs> so again, outro time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time. Bye. Oh, I was hoping to, like, turn in place. Bye. Oh my god, can we end this episode? Oh my god, now you show up. I was looking for you for, like, six minutes. Ah!